What's up? It's your boy Ryan for Ransom. You're watching Rockhead TV, the show created by filmmakers for filmmakers. Thanks for tuning in. Before you check out, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for more content like this. Okay, being that this is the first episode of Rockhead TV, I figured I'd jump it off with the tutorial. I think we're gonna do a little bit of 3D camera tracking and After Effects. For those of you who don't know what 3D camera tracker is, it's basically a way to track the motion position and rotation of your video clip to add things or take away. VFX, text, cloning effects, something like that. I think we're gonna work on a cloning effect today. Let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, here's an example of what we're gonna be making today. This is just me walking through my backyard, uh, being a cool guy. I just really felt weird, for real, to tell the truth. But yeah, man, uh, this is what we're gonna be making, so with no further ado, let's break off into it. All right, first thing you want to do is open up After Effects. I'm working in CS6. You may be working in the newer updated, I, I believe it's CC. Um, regardless, it should work fine in CS6. It does have the camera motion tracker in the program. Okay. Uh, now, the next thing you want to do is import your footage. So I know where my footage is. Wherever you have your footage, just go to it, grab it, drop it into the project folder. From there, you can take it and drag and drop into a new composition and what this will basically do it'll it'll mimic the um frame rate and the aspect ratio of your original footage um let's see let's find a spot here where we can start and i may just do one or two of these i may not uh actually sit there and work on the whole thing i just want to give you guys a basic idea on how to do this effect. So find yourself a starting point, trim your clip. A lot of people do it differently. I just bring it and drag it on down there. Drag this guy here. Trim comp to work area. Break that bad boy down. So now here's my footage. You go to where you wanna start your actual freeze frame and put your first clone and scrolling 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 how about there that works just fine okay so this will be our starting point uh, a lot of people actually stop screenshot and do a bunch of other stuff to create um this effect i'm not going to do that and i may be working a bit backwards here but uh the first thing i'm going to do before i put the uh the motion tracker on there is i'm going to get my first shot it's a little bit backwards, but it won't make a difference in the long end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer. I'm going to duplicate it. You can also hit control D. Um, then I'm going to freeze frame it. Time freeze frame. That way you got this same shot the whole time. All right. Freeze frame right there. So now what I do from here to actually single my little clones out and actually you know get the image that we're going to be pasting on to the motion tracker what you need to do is grab the pen tool zoom in and i will probably speed forward through this but what you want to do is actually cut out your character piece by piece and i'm going to change the resolution to full here just so i can get a cleaner cut uh you, it doesn't have to be perfect the more time you spend on it the better it's going to look obviously i'm just going to do a little rough chop around here and we're going to keep it moving i'm not going to spend all day on it this is just for educational purposes but if i were using this for like a paid project or um you know a personal project that i really cared about that i take a little bit more time all right so once we've got our character cut out and we go ahead and check it out you can see you've got our if we um shut off the bottom layer you'll just see we have the character cut out of the shot and i need to invert that second mask if you ever make a mask inside a mask you're gonna have to invert the second mask so go there and subtract that bad boy there we go that's what i want to see all right now that i've got this layer shut it down what i'm going to do is right click and pre-compose i'm going to move all attributes and we're going to rename this cut one screw it that'll work 
just for a little bit of organization. Now that you've pre-composed it, you can go ahead and delete that file. All right, now we're gonna go to animation. Make sure you're clicked on your layer. Animation. Track camera. Okay, it takes a little bit of time for After Effects to render this composition and do the work, so we'll I'll come back when it's all finished up and we get us some nice tracker points. Yo, if you're learning something right now, do your boy a favor. Go down there and hit that like button. Also, if you really want to look out, uh, hit that subscribe button for more content like this. You'll be happy you did it. All right, next thing you want to do is make sure you're clicking on your main layer there, then click on the 3D motion camera. You'll see all these little points. Um, just they, they, there's all these little points that the uh, 3D motion tracker creates um, out of different areas in the scene. Don't ask me to explain it. I really don't know. But what you want to do is you want to right click once you get three flat points, kind of the same plane as the ground surface you're walking on. You want to hit right click and you want to hit create solid and camera. All right. Now with your solid layer selected, you want to go back down into the project file, find your cutout composition. You see that little guy right there? He's cut out. And you want to click and drag. And while you've got it selected, hold the Alt key and drag it down onto the solid. Release the mouse before you release the Alt key. Bam. Stuck it right on there. All right. So now we've got our actual image tracked into the shot. Um, I would move back and forth and share a little bit, but I don't want to lose the point because I didn't mark it, which I probably should have. But anyway, um, next thing you want to do is you want to go down to the cut. You see, it doesn't match the actual footage. It's just I'm laying on the ground looking like a crazy person. So go down to the footage, go to transform, and you've got your X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. Most of the time, if you go 90 degrees with your X rotation, it'll put you pretty close to where you need to be. So we're gonna try 90 degrees and see what that does. Yep, looks pretty much straight up and down, maybe a little bit off. Uh, main thing is you gotta mess around with this a little bit to match these layers right on top of each other. I'm gonna do 89. I think that'll get it straight enough. And then you wanna do the same thing with your Z position and your Y position. Just mess around with them until it straightens out and starts to match the original footage that's getting a little bit straighter there i like it there and y rotation oh part of me z rotation we'll go there and now we want to match it up on top of the actual layer Usually you have to make it bigger, but in this case it looks like we need to shrink it up everybody's footage is going to be different it's always not going to be the exact same so we're going to just downscale it a little bit until it matches our original composition. And we're just going to stick it right there on top. Uh, let's scale down just a little bit more. Let's say about 85. That looks about right. And it looks like we need to put a little bit more rotation on that bad boy. Uh, it's not perfect, but for the intents and purposes of this tutorial, that'll be good enough. If you want to sit there and mess with it until it's absolutely perfect, you are more than free to. It will make your actual effect look a lot better. Um, but we're just going to leave it like that. That's pretty good now for this tutorial. Now, once your character reaches this point in the video, you want him to disappear almost as if you are disappearing into yourself or the character is disappearing into himself. So what I do here is I select the layer, the cut out layer, and I hit alt left bracket on the keyboard. And what that does, it just trims the rest of the layer behind it. So if we scroll back on the timeline, we see that our clone is linked up to the shot perfectly. It matches all the camera movement. This is a powerful tool. It's super simple to use. Uh, all you have to have is a little bit of knowledge of the program. And um, there you go. Too easy. 
just like that. I think that's the only one I'm going to do. You get the picture of what I'm talking about here. Just repeat this process as many times as you want to, and you will get a similar effect. I did skip one step, though. I mentioned earlier that I was going to show you how to clean up those edges a little bit, and it's nothing complicated at all. Just go down. You can either hit MM or you can just select that cutout layer. Um, actually, I've already pre-composed it, so I should do this a while ago. Just double-click the pre-composition, get to the mask layer, mask, and we will feather it out by four on each one. And that'll just smoothen out some of those rough edges from the cutout. Go back into your main composition, and as you can see, it has smoothed those edges out a little bit. Um, and like I say, the more you mess with this, the better it will look. But uh, this is just a basic idea on how to do it. On the video I showed previously, I put a little bit of color correction on it. And there were a few more videos, but that is about it. You get the gist. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like, comment, let me know what you think. And most of all, please subscribe. Peace.